I'm Michelle. Welcome back to my channel, Michelle I Loves Books. This is an announcement video for this journey that I am going to embark on, reading all of the Shadow Hunter universe books. I decided to do it this way because when I get into a series, I love to be completely immersed in the world. But it is officially time. I am so excited for this project. I've been anticipating this project and planning this project since the summer. The books currently consist of about 16 books. I actually own most of them. Since this series is so beloved and so popular, I wanted to vlog this experience. There will be spoilers when I get into starting to talk about the books. So I'm actually not 100% new to the series. I have read about six of the books before. I have read City of Bones, City of Ashes, and City of Glass. When I first read City of Bones, um, it was years ago and I fell in love with it. And then like the movie came out and what was it? And then I listened to City of Ashes and City of Glass on audiobook. And then just last year, I read Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince and Cro Clockwork Princess. And I listened to them all on audiobook. And then also, of course, I have seen the movie and I've only watched about a couple episodes of the TV show. I will get into talking about that a little bit more as I start to read the books. And I'm also going to be using a reading order suggested by Emma Books. And I will leave her video linked below. It's extremely helpful if this is something that you wanna do. I watched it about four or five times just to make sure I got all the novellas in the right spot. I chose the specific one because I do want that immersion. She does such a good job of explaining the different reading orders and what kind of experience you will have, um, like how to fit in the novellas so that you have the most impactful reading experience and so that you're not spoiled for any big reveals. Okay, so we're gonna go with City of Bones, City of Ashes, City of Glass, Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, Clockwork Princess, City of Fallen Angels, City of Lost Souls, City of Heavenly Fire, and then the next one I would need to buy, Red Scrolls of Magic, which is the first in the series that isn't fully published yet. Um, it was recommended to read that after City of Heavenly Fire and before Lady Midnight. And I guess this one actually takes place during City of Fallen Angels, Bane Chronicles. I actually listened to this one on audiobook as well, and I was actually kind of bored with it, but I think it'll mean a lot more to me when I get more connected to his character because I just kind of jumped into it and then I wasn't really invested in it anyways. So Tales from the Shadow Hunter Academy, Ghost of the Shadow Market. And then this other one was not mentioned in Emma's video, but it's I did see it on Goodreads that there's another novella called Jocelyn's Story, and I would be really interested in reading that. The Dark Artifices, Lady Midnight, and I actually found, and you might be like wondering why I have all the books in the series, because I knew I was going to read it, I knew I wanted, I was gonna love it, and then I just kept finding them at the thrift store for really cheap. Hello, thinking ahead, Lord of Shadows. And then the last one I don't have, which is Queen of Air and Darkness. And then there's also the Shadow Hunters Codex and then like an illustrated book. By the time I finally get all of these read, Chain of Gold might be published by then. I think it's supposed to be published next year, 2020, but I'm not sure when. That would be so, so cool if I finished reading up to that point just as it's released, like that would be so cool. That is my plan. I will come back and update you on City of Bones and Ice. I have finished City of Bones. Now, as I've said, I have already read this book. I've actually read this book two times. This was like my third reread for this book. So I already knew that I was gonna love it. I already knew everything that was gonna go down. I wasn't sure if I would feel like I outgrew this book and the writing style. No, I didn't. <laughs> I still loved everything about it. It was like such a treat to go back and reread through moments between Jace and Clary. I love Jace, like snarky attitude, his bad boy vibe. I kind of forgot how many times he just went off and did his own thing despite the wishes of the clave and Hodge, how much in charge Hodge was over their performance. I also forgot about how big of a dick Alec was. <laughs> okay, so there's this moment where Alec says, Isabel hails from one of the greatest shadow hunter dynasties in history. Alec said dryly, this girl on the other hand hails from New Jersey. And Clary's like, I'm from Brooklyn. So what, I just killed a demon in my own house and you're going to be a dickhead about it because I'm not some spoiled rotten rich brat like you and your sister. I mostly love the banter between Jace and Clary with all of his like sexual innuendos. 
the movie actually kept a lot of those moments in, like some of the best moments. But speaking of the movie, I didn't really remember a lot of the details of things that got left out from the movie. So I loved the movie and I've watched it a million times. But after rereading this book now that it's fresh on my mind, I can see why fans were so disappointed in the movie. And there's a lot to be explained about um, Parabatai's that was not even touched on at all in the movie. As far as the actors, I really loved Lily Collins as Clary, even though she didn't have the right color hair from the book Clary. Her hair is supposed to be really bright red. However, the actress in the TV show, I would say, looks a lot more like the Clary from the book, but I really don't like her acting in the TV show. I feel like it's very unnatural. But I don't know, maybe that's something that gets better. And I've also seen only like a few of the first episodes. The difference between the setting from the first movie to the TV show and comparison to the book, I really like the setting in the movie a lot better because it's like older, it's more classical looking to me. Whereas in the TV show, they modernized it so much and they use like high tech, which I just as for the actors that play Jace, Alec and Isabel from the movie to the TV show. I think that all the actors in both the, the TV show and the movie, I think they all did a really good job, especially Isabel. Like I could not pick which one did a better job. So back to the book, there's this obvious love triangle and I'm not a person that has any problem with that trope. A lot of drama that's always really fun to play out. So we have Simon who's the best friend and I love the dynamic between Clary and Simon. I think they make such a good best friends couple. They have like their own language which I just I loved rereading their parts and how they connect. Also it's very obvious how much Simon adores Clary and sees her as more than just a friend which is kind of sad. Clary is very naive to it all. I think in the movie they portrayed it to where like she really had no clue. The book, I kind of got a different vibe from Clary. Like, like she can sense it, she's not that stupid. She just doesn't want to cross that boundary because she loves Simon as a friend. But then, of course, Jace comes into the picture and then Simon's like, can see how much Clary adores Jace and he starts to get afraid that he's going to lose Clary. So he finally lets it be known that he's been in love with her. And I know a lot of people didn't like this, but I really do. I really love the whole love triangle with... Okay, and I do remember a part in City of Ashes where Clary and Simon do actually start to date. I didn't like that part, which I guess when I actually go back to City of Ashes and reread it, we will talk about that. Uh, we'll see how that all goes down because I forget how they decided to start dating. I really don't like how Izzy kind of semi-dates Simon. And she like shows like a legitimate interest in Simon, like takes him under her wing, which I don't think that like she's a bitch or anything. Like I think she's really sweet. I think that it's interesting to have Simon in their little circle because it's either her brother or Jace, who's like a brother. I don't know. I just, I really didn't like it. It was Jace who's explained to Clary like, oh, don't worry about it. Like she'll be over him in a minute. And she's not the kind of person that like has boyfriends. For me, it just seemed really unlike Isabel's character. I think if it was a more just like flirting with him, I think that's kind of one thing that I get irritated with in books is that all the characters seem to have to be paired up. That's kind of annoying to me because the supporting characters like don't all have to hook up with each other either. Maybe they could find someone outside of the circle to start dating. So now moving on to City of Ashes, the biggest plot point right now is that Valentine claimed that Clary and Jace are both his children. But Jace and Clary have already fallen in love. They need to like not love each other because they're brother and sister and like that's gross. They're ha really, really struggling with that. This could easily be sorted out if they could talk to Clary's mom, but she is like in this sleeping beauty state. Maybe true love's kiss? Okay, I've been like seriously watching way too much Disney lately. No, what was that? What? We went to go see Maleficent, so you know, true love's kiss and all that. Oh, I did also forget to mention that the portals from the book and the movie are completely different. And I don't know if that's like a huge deal of like where they're located. I just know it's different. I don't know why they changed it. And I guess they've also all been destroyed. I'm, I'm interested to see how that goes. Okay, so this is City of Ashes. I forget what chapter I'm in. I'm on page 73 right now. Last update, I was really upset with Mary Say. I called her Mary Say, but it's, shit, how you pronounce it? Marseille? Yeah, Marseille. 
Um, so we got the pronunciation correct and Luke went to go vouch for Jace to her. And then we find out that um, everything she was doing, kicking him out of the house, was part of protecting him. And I was just like, oh, like she might be a cold hearted bitch sometimes. But like she really, truly really cares for Jace as one of her own and she was trying to protect him. Inquisitor lady coming and she could potentially put Jace in jail because of his connection to Valentine. Oh my gosh, all this stuff is like coming up. So the plot line is really thickening. I'd like forgot, like now that I'm rereading it, I remember reading this stuff before. Like I'd forgotten about it or I think I was maybe more focused on the characters than the plot line and this time I'm focusing more on the plot line and stuff like that like the foundations of the story despite the characters and all of their crazy ass decisions now simon he is acting like he's like dis okay obviously jace and clary are now supposed to act like brother and sister and feel that way about each other there's something missing for simon he's still like thinks that Jace is a threat, I believe, because, I mean, it could still come out that maybe they're not related. They don't know 100% sure. It has not been verified. The only reasoning they have is from this, this big fat liar. I think that Simon is still just like, despite Jace being her brother, that she's still not over it, still can't see Simon the way he wants her to see him. And I think it's really kind of eating him up. It's just really sad. Like, I really feel bad for Simon because I love Simon and I don't pity him the way I pity other characters in his position. Oops, it's like really bright. Um, I really like their dynamic together, but I really love them as a, as friends. And so I really care about Simon and I don't want him to hurt because he's sweet. Um, but I have to go make dinner now and I'm really excited to pick up this book after dinner. I did... I told myself I was like not gonna check out any books from the library and like I just couldn't help myself. I was like, oh, I could squeeze another book in. So I checked out Sorcery of Thorns. Okay, I'm gonna get it. So I'm gonna try to read that one as well. I think it's up for a nomination on the Goodreads Choice Awards. I'm gonna go make dinner. I think we're doing breakfast for dinner, my favorite. Okay, I stayed up late last night finishing City of Ashes. It is just astounding to me that this was one of my most dreaded books because I had such a bad experience with it the first time around. How did it go from being like one of the worst books to being a favorite? This book was so good. There was so much going on. So where did I leave off? I left off with Imogen. Imogen was being like a crazy bitch and horrible to Jace. Him being locked in that cage and with bindings around his wrist, she didn't take them off. And so like it was cutting into his skin. Roller coaster of drama with Imogen was really fascinating to me. Like it went from like hating her so much to kind of understanding her perspective and still does not make what she did to Jace okay. She was just like so delusional. I loved the moment when she realized that she was wrong. The whole drama with Imogen also opened up the opportunity to see Marseille in a different light as well. Marseille's always been really cold, uncaring. At the beginning, she tried to kick Jace out of her house. I, was, I did not like her. I was very upset with her, but this moment gave her the opportunity to stand up and like show a lot of affection towards Jace and like claim her as her own as much as Alec and Isabel. That was just like such a sweet moment there because Jace has been going through so much stuff. It seemed like the worst thing that he had been going through up until he met Clary was the fact that his father died. He finds out that Valentine is his dad. Clary is his sister. He's got a mother he never like knew and doesn't know how to react emotionally about any of this stuff. He's feeling outcasted from the Lightwoods. So it's understandable that he's been acting out. It's just about time for someone to stand up for Jason. Now I'm pretty sure, I don't know a 100%, but I'm pretty sure that it's going to come out that Valentine is not Jace's father. It's just a matter of how we go about finding out this information. The first hint that he's not his father and there's someone out there who can sort this mess out is Imogen because she starts questioning Jace when she comes to apologize to Jace for her reaction towards him. Like there's a scar or something and he doesn't quite know where he got and he says that his dad told me he got it sometime when he was younger. Some realization occurs to Imogen. A demon comes up behind him and she basically 
throws herself in front of him. We never find out what it was that she was going to tell Jace. And I know, I know it's something about the truth of who his real father is. So that's so frustrating. I was expecting it though. I was just really hopeful that we would have this sorted out. Oh yeah, so Simon loses a whole bunch of blood and he's left for dead, but Jace sees there's a flicker of life in him, but he needs to have blood. He actually lets Simon drink from him. I'm like, what? That was so shocking. I mean, it's not really because like, Jace is an amazing guy, of course. He'll do what it takes to save him, but like just the whole thing of like, that is such an intimate, intrusive and intimate at the same time. That was just so good. I love that moment. Simon, at the end of it all, we find out that Simon can walk in the sun. I think it has something to do with the fact that he drank Jace's blood and Jace's part angel. And so it has given him some sort of ability to walk in the sunlight. This has obviously never happened before because shadow hunters don't mix with down worlders. But the only thing I find a little bit of a plot hole is if no one's ever heard of this because there's no vampires that they know of that can walk in sunlight. And I just feel like as much as they fight, that at some point a vampire would have drank in would have drank a shadow hunter's blood. It might come out later, but I just kind of unrealistic to me that this is the first time this has ever happened. Either it's that or Clary was really distraught about losing him and did something to him while she was hugging him and like like with her runes, which is also really cool. Um I know it was they hinted at it in the movie that she could draw runes that didn't exist, but like we're getting more and more in depth into that whole idea that she can create runes. Like that's really interesting about Clary, how she can do that. And then is it in this book? Yes. And then Jace discovers like he can like super jump. Okay. If Valentine is not Jace's father and like that whole storyline is going to play out, then it wouldn't make sense that Jace is going to have superpowers like Clary has. It wouldn't have been Jace that he was experimenting on, right? Who um, knows how to cure Jocelyn. So to wrap up City of Ashes, Basically, Valentine escapes the ship with the mortal cup and the soul sword. He didn't complete the ritual of the sword to gain the power to summon demons. But I forgot, I actually forgot the details of that. Because he can summon demons with the mortal cup, but the soul sword is much more powerful. So he wanted the power of the soul sword. I'd like to reverse the power. I actually forgot that. Clary and Jace are brother and sister. They've also come to terms that that's all they're going to be to each other, which leaves Clary in tears. And I'm like, okay, first Jace was all pissed off because he was like, let's go be in, let's go be together in secret. And Clary was like, that's disgusting. We're going to like, we can't do that. And Jace was all pissed off. I don't know. But now Clary is like really upset because apparently Jace doesn't have feelings for her anymore. Clary and Simon have declared that they're just friends now because Simon has finally opened his eyes and was like, you're never gonna feel about me the way you feel about Jace, which I think that is so wonderful, it's so healthy. And like, Clary was like, I don't wanna lose you, but he's like, hey, like, I'm still here. I'm still your best friend. I'm still your family and all that stuff. But like, I like, let's not take it beyond that until like, you're ready. So I feel like that that was like really wholesome. I was really pleased with that. I'm like so happy. Cause I, <sighs> reading back, I remembered that they like dated and I was like, oh my God. But like reading through their like relationship, I love that they tried to see where it would go. And I love, I feel like they had to do it, especially for Simon's, Simon had to know what it was like to date Clary, realizes that as much as he wants Clary to feel for him, it's just not the same because she doesn't feel for him. It, being with her and dating her are not like the same thing. It's time for him to move on and I just feel like, like he needed that. Clary, she was kind of pissing me off that she actually strung him along that way and used him as a distraction. Like, you know, it is what it is. They're back to being friends as it should be. We left off Simon is a vampire who can walk in the sun and his superior vampire clan leader, Raphael is kind of pissed off about that. And I feel like that's gonna probably lead into another big plot line. They're not just gonna leave it alone. The vampires probably all want that ability, how it happened to him and how the other vampires are gonna be able to achieve that. And then also at the end, then Madeline, Jocelyn's old friend from Idris, shows up and she's got information on how to cure Jocelyn. She knows what happened to Jocelyn, which also makes me think that she might know the truth be behind Jace's parentage. 
this book just leaves me with so many questions about what's gonna happen in the next books and so I'm just oh, I'm loving it I'm loving it so so much I love finally in this book we have a map of Manhattan although it's kind of funny because now we have left Manhattan and we are all in Idris now. There, oh my gosh, there's already so much going on here in Idris. So let's go through some of my annotations so I can remember. So we got this whole thing between Jace and Clary. Something that I highlighted, she said she swallowed because, and she's like thinking this in her mind, because you told me you don't have feelings for me anymore and you see that's very awkward because I still have them for you and I bet you know it. So like there's this like awkwardness between them. It actually made me really sad, like as gross. It kind of leaves you with this weird like sour taste in your mouth. Okay, that's really awkward. You guys are brother and sister, like ew. But at the same time, through the evolution of their relationship, like you can see why it's so, so tragic for them in love with each other and not being able to act on it. And like they shouldn't. Clary's trying to get ready to go to Idris and she's like so gung-ho about it mostly because she wants to figure out how to fix her mom but also because she doesn't want to be left out like she's a shadow hunter and they keep treating her like she's not one of them that's kind of messed up i think it's kind of shitty that jace was trying to leave her out except there's a really big reason i was getting really pissed off at jace like, trying to lie to her and like make choices for her everything's for her protection but but I'm so glad that it wasn't that lame. There also seems to be some sort of connection between Jace and Simon. Not only is Jace confiding in Simon about some things regarding Clary, he, he's trying to like create an alliance with Simon to lie to Clary, but it was really interesting. When Simon showed up, there was like a big group he was like eavesdropping on and Jace kind of like sensed that he was there. So I'm wondering because he drank his blood that there is like gonna be now this like little connection between them. So that's interesting. And I still love their banter. I'm so happy that although Simon has vampire, that he's still keeping a lot of his humor. For some reason, before I reread it, I was thinking that Jace had lost a lot of his snarky um, snarkiness that I loved, but he didn't. So I'm really pleased with that. Okay, so back to City of Glass though. So they, they kind of hint at what happened at in the ship. Jace gave him his blood, but they don't really like talk about it because I guess it's kind of awkward. Um, so they kind of make a joke out of it if it's mentioned. So Jace is like, Simon pointed out, I got your message stuck to my window when I woke up this morning. Don't you ever use the phone like normal people? Not if I can avoid it, vampire, says Jace. Jay says, so it's still true. You can walk in the sunlight. Even midday sun doesn't burn you. Simon says, yes, but you knew that you were there without elaborating on what there meant. So Jay says, I thought perhaps it had worn off. He didn't sound as if he meant it. If I feel the urge to burst into flames, I'll let you know. Simon never had much patience with Jace. Look, did you ask me to come all the way uptown just so you can stare at me like I was something in a Petri dish? Next time I'll send you a photo and I'll frame it and put it on my nightstand, said Jace. So I don't know why, I just like that really struck me as really funny. And I think I flagged it too because it's like, it's something like significant. It was a moment that was significant between their relationship. Okay, I don't use my red flags very often, but here is the part that I flagged with a red one because it really made me mad. This is the whole part where Jace is trying to get Simon to lie about it. And Simon's like, no, hold up. She's really looking forward to it. Simon's always with with Clary and Clary's really excited to go to Idris. Simon's not gonna be a part of taking that away from her. So like, I literally wrote like, bad Jace, good Simon. And of course, Jace is like, I'm trying to protect her. This was making me so mad. Thankfully, we don't have to wait too long. Jace does kind of hint at there's something really dangerous about her going to Idris. Jace says, yes, I lied to the clave. There's only a few people that know. If they knew she could do what she does, amplify ordinary runes so they have incredible destructive power, they'd want her as a fighter and a weapon. But there's like a lot more to that. That's and Madeline dies and I'm like, what? We're killing off all these people who actually have really good information for Clary. First they had to kill Imogen before she could get it out of her mouth. Now we've killed Madeline before she can assist in waking up Jocelyn. So like, I'm not about killing her or anything, but that was just, thanks Santa Claire for killing off somebody else. So in order to save Simon again, Jace drags Simon through the portal into Idris and the portal closes. Clary is late. She misses her chance to go through the portal. She decides to draw a rune and open up her own door, take a leap of faith and go on through. Despite what Magnus says, here's all these laws, which is really cool how they protect people from just 
waltzing into their world and how they protect it. When she was really distraught about late, about the portal closing, I kind of anticipated she was gonna make her own. Luke grabs her arm and chases her through the portal and Clary lands face first into a lake, which foreshadowing looks like a mirror. Now, as soon as that came about, I was like, I remember this. So the lake is the third mortal instrument. It's the mirror. It's kind of cool to see that now being like foreshadowed to. And it's so ironic too, that she would like land face first in, into it and nobody can find this mirror. I love the irony in all of that. Another really funny moment is Jace is like, I'm sure my blood is fantastic. Simon set the empty flask down on the arm of the chair by the bed. There's something very wrong with you. Mentally, I mean. I just, I love the way they talk to each other, their language. So they're going through Idris. Now I wish that there was a map of Idris in the book. I don't know if there's a map in any of the other books, but like we're at Idris in this book. I want a map of Idris. Well, Idris and Alicante. Luke is pissed off at Clary. I was actually like surprised. He was harsh in what he said to her, but he kind of does have a point, but it was just like so harsh. And here's what he said. Of course you didn't know. You don't know anything about Idris. You don't even care about Idris. You were just upset about being left behind like a child and you had a tantrum. And now we're here lost and freezing. Come on, let's start walking. So now he's kind of, as they're traipsing through Idris to get to the city, the glass city of Alicante. He's teaching her and the reader about Idris and pointing out some things of interest. That is really cool. I'm really loving this part of it woven into the story. It's just, it's written so well, it's not like info dump. Okay, so then we meet Sebastian. A lot of the stuff is kind of coming back to me now and it's kind of weird. Now that Sebastian is brought up and it's kind of coming to me, that makes Sebastian Clary's real brother. It's kind of like mentally unhinged. Sebastian knows the truth of all of this and he's in on the lie with Valentine. So this is all what I remember. So yeah, it was kind of cool to see where exactly in the storyline that we meet Sebastian. It's pretty clear right away, Jace is not his self in front of Sebastian. I think Jace has like a feeling about Sebastian, like there's something not quite right about him. And he seems to know all about Jace and Clary, but it's not necessarily suspicious because like they're all the hot topic. The thing about the mirror is that no one knows where it is. In fact, no one knows what it is. <laughs> and Simon's like, it's a mirror, Simon said. You know, reflective glass, I'm just assuming. <laughs> He's like so like Captain Obvious. And I don't know how, who this Aline is. I, I thought she was younger, but then Simon accuses Jace of flirting with Aline. So that would be awkward, but maybe she's the same age. All I know is Sebastian's about the same age. I also made a note because I know where rest of the series is going and all the different timelines, especially with the infernal devices coming up after this book, we're going to go back in history and meet Will Herondale. None of the names really struck out to me. A lot of times when I'm reading, I only pay attention to like their first names and I, last names are always really hard to keep track of. I did make a note here of all the names listed in the graveyard, all the Shadowhunter families. So we have Cartwright, Meriwether, Hightower, Blackwell, Midwinter, and Herondale. And oh, and so, okay, so this mirrored water, the mirrored water, it's poisonous to shadow hunters. And I, knowing what it is now, I forgot that it was like poisonous to shadow hunters, and yet downworlders can drink it and everything, and they're fine. So Clary gets a mouthful of it, and she gets most of it out, but she's starting to hallucinate and have symptoms. Luke is like trying to get her to his friend's house as soon as possible to help her so she doesn't succumb to it and die. I just think that it's really ironic that it is a mortal instrument, which are the instruments supposedly from the angel. They are meant for the shadow hunters and yet this one is poisonous to shadow hunters. I think this whole like war, war and separation between shadow hunters and downworlders, like maybe that's maybe the story is going to challenge that idea. Anyways, okay. So now Jason and Simon are talking about something, and I put a note here because I was like, ew, don't dredge that up. So Simon says you're flirting with Aline. It doesn't seem like all you cared about was Clary. Then it's kind of weird that Simon would care at all because he would want to drive that wedge between them and, and everything. But, but Simon truly, truly loves Clary and like whatever makes her happy. And he's also protecting her too. And he doesn't want Jace to hurt her. Jace wants something from Simon. So Simon makes a deal and says, then you need to do whatever it is to convince Clary that you have no feelings for her. And I guess he already did that. So 
Mm. Okay, so huge plot point here on page 60 already. What was it that Valentine said when Clary drew the rune on the ship? So this goes back to Clary's ability and the significance of that. And he's he basically explains it all to him and says, it's a portent of doom. But what does it have to do with Valentine? Not just Valentine, said Jace. All of us. The clave and the law. What Clary can do what Clary can do overturns everything they know to be true. No human being can create new runes or draw the sort of runes Clary can. Only angels have that power. What? And since Clary can do that, well, it seems like important. Things are changing. The laws are changing. The old ways may never be right. Just as the rebellion of the angels, angels ended the world as it was. It split heaven in half and created hell. This could mean the end of the Nephilim as they currently exist. This is our war in heaven, vampire. And only one side can win it. So this made me forgive Jace for trying to be overly protective and keep Clary away from Idris. Like, it all makes sense now. That is a really big deal. So I'm glad it wasn't something super lame. Like, I just want to protect her. It could be dangerous. Like, that was his excuse, but it's because... But I don't forgive him for not being honest with Clary. Like, just fucking tell Clary. But I guess I kind of understand that some people... Some of the characters have to withhold information to draw out the drama for the purposes of the storytelling element and the suspense and the you know come on what's going on elements that we all love about reading Ugh, i'm loving this i'm loving this book so much too so now there's a new inquisitor inquisitor alder tree there's that like i love that simon is part of their circle now even though especially now that he's a downworlder when he was a mundane it was really difficult for him to like be part of the group but at least he was a mundane and it's like downworlders are even worse than mundanes or no maybe mundanes are worse than downworlders in their mind but like now that he's into a downworlder like he's still in their circle but like he can actually help them more now instead of being a liability I really like that this story is kind of exploring Simon's relationship with Jace, just Jace without Clary and Simon's relationship with Alec now. So Simon totally calls Alec on his shit and he's like, I see you looking at Jace and I see myself looking at Clary and I figure maybe we have that one thing in common and maybe it might make you dislike me a little bit less. What is it? There's this whole thing. So Simon's talking to Alec about how Izzy is talking or flirting with Sebastian. And so Alec is like explaining Isabel's, you know, her personality of just like flirting with everybody. Anybody who would piss off her parents. That's the only people that she's interested in dating. So he says, I think she does it for attention, Alec said. She, she's the only girl in the family too. So she has to keep proving how tough she is or at least that at least that's what she thinks. Simon says, or maybe she's trying to take the attention off of you. Simon said almost absently, you know, since your parents don't know that you're gay and all. And like, that is the first time anyone has actually come out to Alec and said it. I thought Alec was gonna get pissed. Clary, I know Clary challenged him in the first book and he got pissed at her, but that was before he met Magnus Bane. Now that we've had some time of him kind of casually seeing Magnus and like that, that relationship building up, he seems to be more accepting of being gay. I just think it's so nice. I love this. I love this like whole, Alex stopped in the middle of the road so suddenly that Simon almost crashed into him. No, he said, but apparently everyone else does. Except Jace, Simon said. He doesn't know, does he? But I think Jace does know. Know that he's gay, because he sees it, you know? Alex now worried that Simon's... Alex not ready to come out to his parents, and I thought... At least they said it in the movie, and I can't remember if it was said in the book. I actually don't think it's mentioned in the book at all. But it's said in the movie that being gay is like against the rules and they're not allowed to be gay and so that's why he has to fight so hard to hide it because it's like the rules of their world simon's just kind of like you know we actually share something in common maybe it'll make you hate me a little bit less and i'm not gonna tell anyone i just you know want you to know that you're not alone in your feelings and like ugh, simon is the best i love simon so much and that's where i'm at so I feel like these like little vlogs are gonna be so, 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 so long. I still have like 400 pages to go. That's that and I will update you later. I've just finished this book. I feel like I have so many feels and so much. Remember in City of Ashes how I said it was really cringy? It's way worse in City of Glass. The scene where they're like full on rolling around in the grass, making out, I just, even though I know that they aren't really brother and sister, but they still thought that they were related. The events that happened in this book were just really cool, where we meet Alder Tree. Alder Tree is yet another corrupt member of the clave, 
tosses Simon in jail, which I thought that that was really interesting because of the fact that he's Jewish. They couldn't use your standard means of confining him, so they had to use like the Solomon star. I also really love the bonding moment between Simon and Jace because there was this moment of truth when Jace goes to break him out of jail where they're staring at each other, realize that they're both trying to protect each other. And while it might have started out because of Clary, there is like something more there. You could see like they're becoming friends. And so I really, really loved that. Then I was really pissed at Jace because, because she gets there and she's expecting Jace to do what he always does and help her out and be excited to see her. And he treats her like garbage. First she walks in on him making out with Aline. That is awkward. And I really liked how Cassandra Clare wrote that whole scene because despite Jace's words, how you can see the hurt in his face too. The whole thing could have just been avoided if he had just explained to her what he was trying to protect her from. But you know, of course we gotta have some of that miscommunication, which is actually a big trope that I really get sick of. It eventually all comes out. No, actually, he never actually does tell her. Oh yeah, Clary tells Sebastian, who's being like pushy and really forward with her. He's just like awkward about things. She tells Sebastian what she's after and then Sebastian's like goes with her to find Ragnar Fell because supposedly because all of a sudden he knows who Ragnar Fell is and how to find him. He takes Clary there where Ragnar Fell is dead and Magnus Bane is posing as Ragnar Fell. And I thought that was really cool because when he opens the door you at first think so are they the same person? Clary winds up striking a deal with Magnus Bane. If she retrieves the Book of the White for him, then he will cure her mother with the spell in the book. Okay, so back to Sebastian. He's the real Jonathan Christopher Morgenstern. But there was like, even though I remembered that from back when I read it the first time, there was still some doubt in there. I was like, well, maybe I remembered this wrong because he had this whole backstory of his family or rather, the real Sebastian's family. But overall, that was just really, really clever, gritty, and he could find how to push everyone's buttons and just like basically fuck with everybody, <laughs> especially messing with Clary. Oh yes, there was a moment where Clary and Sebastian are talking and they're talking about Jace and Valentine really does have a lot of care for Jace because he's his son or something like that. And Sebastian gets like really touchy about it and he's just like that's impossible and you can see like a streak of jealousy in there so that was also kind of some foreshadowing because you're not supposed to know the real truth at that point when you're reading it and then there's this moment where like you start to suspect there's something um sinister about sebastian i guess his black hair dye rubs off on her hands and i'm like i don't know i mean unless he's really doesn't know how to do a dye job that wouldn't really happen unless maybe he like just dyed his hair i, I know it was like for the purposes of foreshadowing but it was just kind of like okay whatever so then jay shows up at amethyst's which is luke's sister um which that was a whole nother cool storyline as well jay shows up at Amatus's house to apologize to Clary and I love how Clary like lashes out at him. He well deserved that. And then they teleport to the Wayland Manor where they retrieve the Book of the White. Valentine had a freaking angel trapped in his cellar. That was so crazy to me. I, I completely forgot about that. Angel winds up sending them like telepathic images from the past and explaining the truth of everything. But of course they misinterpret it because they still believe that the child given the demon blood was Jace. And so Jace is like using it as a crutch. Well, this is why I'm such a bad person. Then that's when they start like making out like crazy. And then thank goodness Clary's like, so that's why you want me because you think you're evil and I don't have demon blood in me. So like that, like, why do I still want you? So there's that whole thing. Yeah, I think uh, Jace is gonna get the award for most dramatic character for the year. Also, Max died. That was just like so horrible that Max died and I felt so bad for Isabel because she felt totally responsible for it. So Magnus obviously went back to New York and, and cured Jocelyn. So Jocelyn explains everything to Clary. Finally, I've only been waiting for two long books. So meanwhile, Jace is with Valentine and Sebastian and he's getting the truth on that end. So there's this whole anticipation. Can't I couldn't wait for them to get back together and just be like, hey, so like we're not related, like we can be together. Jace and Clary who were given angel blood and 
the real Jonathan Christopher given demon blood. They all figured out what the third more instrument was, was able to speak to the angel and she used his favor to save Jace. I mean, it was kind of expected, but that happened. So I'm just like really excited to see what happens next between like Jace and Clary, now that they're not related and they can be together, between Simon and Jace and seeing how their friendship develops. And between Alec and Magnus, now that Alec has finally decided that he's not going to be ashamed of his feelings for Magnus, and especially with Jocelyn. She knows that her son had not died when he was a baby, and um, I'm expecting that she's going to want to get to know him. I don't think that that's going to be easy. Also with Clary and Jocelyn as well, now that the truth is out. So I'm just really, really excited to see how all of these things happen. I kind of want to move on to finish that series before I go on to the Infernal Devices, but I'm not going to do that because I wanted to stick to the reading order. This world has gotten really quite complex. The characters have gotten really complex with deep storylines and it's just so, so exciting. So this is the end of part one. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the Infernal Devices for part two. So you can look forward to that in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye.